get this figure and more at Hobby Link Japan, and don't forget about that merch. Hey, what up, it's Jobby, and today we're finally taking a look at a certain angel winged anime figure. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know what Digimon or Digivolving Spirits is, really? At this point, pause this video real quick and check out the description, please. The Digivolving Spirits Holy Angemon, aka Magna Angemon, is the seventh Digivolving Spirits figure. Why am I seven figures deep into this line? I wouldn't even call myself a super fan of Digimon or anything. I don't even know who the holy hell Holy Angemon is. But what I do know is that Holy Angemon is the ultimate level form of Patamon, which I did review a long time ago. Links in the description. Hey, my name is Jobby, and you have no idea how fascinated I've been with Pokemon Go. I mean, it's always going to be consuming a lot of my life. That video's totally gonna hold up forever. So because I'm not familiar with Holy Angemon at all, there's a nostalgic small brain part of me that would have preferred the normal champion level Angemon. At first glance, Holy Angemon just seems like a total cluster. How many wings does this guy even have? One, two, three, four, eight! Eight wings! How many wings do you even need? We get it, you have a big... It's a little excessive is all I'm saying. But I did have enough time to get used to the figure. I mean, I didn't upload content for like a whole month. And all that time with the figure allowed me to look past the bullshit and even learn to accept that this design is not that bad. I'd even say he looks kind of cooler than Vanilla Angemon with a dumber helmet. This clear plastic piece is actually on a hinge joint, allowing you to reveal his pretty face. Not even his female counterpart could reveal her face. That would be haram. And just like Anjuwoman, Holy Anjuwoman is covered in really cool looking ribbons. I happen to be fluent in the ancient Digimon language, as seen in my Omnimon review. And let's take a look at what this says. So... Buy Jobby the Hong merch, available at the Screenway Media Store, links in the description. The larger ribbons at the sides of the figure have this little chode attached to them, but we could just ignore that, everything is fine, totally not the worst of the kibble on this figure. That prestigious honor goes to the- Oh boy! Could be worse could be staring in my soul. The kibble here is obviously undeniable, but it is pretty cool that Bandai went the extra mile to cover these eyes up with this top pair of wings. This panel along with that panel creates the illusion that this top pair of wings is folding inward. That's really cool. But of course that illusion is broken if you move it even a micro inch. Oh, that baby. If we ignore the back for a moment, these kibble parts actually make for convincing wings thanks to very nice feather detailing. The only kibble that truly feels out of place to me are these panels at the left. Yes, that's half a mouth. And there's nothing, nothing here to make them look like anything but. There's no wing detail like the rest of the shell parts. That would have been at least okay, would have been wing heels. But then again, it really has no correlation to the animated design, but who gives a shit at this point? That's just terrible. And if this wasn't bad enough, the ball joints here are super annoying. Really makes handling the legs kind of a hassle. I'm surprised to say that the excess amount of wings aren't that bad to handle. The ball joints are nice and tight. It might look like a mess up here, but it's surprisingly pleasant to handle. And that's in no small part due to the die-cast metal boots here. They're pretty much carrying the weight of this heap of kibble. In addition to these boots being die-cast metal, his belt, titty, and gold wristband are also made of die-cast metal. Ah, shit! You can put this thing away if you wanted to, but that plays more into the transformation. I mean, digiva, I mean, D digivolution. Is it just me, or are these arms a little short? It's even more obvious with the black. Uh, everybody, let me introduce you to a piece of bullshit, aka elbow cap. This thing pops off too damn easily. I. Hate it! You might be better off super gluing this thing into place. As for accessories, you only get this clear purple block. And if we lift up this back pair of wings, get a look at this bum bum, you could take that purple block and fiddle it and in there, there it is. And that's gonna let you plug him into any stand of your choice. In this case, I'm using, of course, Benet Imagination. Let's see if it works. Oh. Oh, yes. Looks fine. But of course, he would look even better if we posed him a little bit. Ball joint. Oh, shit. This came off easier than expected. He can look left and right, somewhat up and down into his chest. He's got a ball joint at his ponytail, but it's kind of hard to access due to all the crap. Uh, 
there it is. And since we're here, hinge joint, ball joint here, hinge joint here, another hinge, and there's a hinge joint here and a hinge joint here. Gives you that nice inward curve. Ball joint at the shoulder. This clear purple shoulder guard is also on a ball joint. Some forward movement. Arm kind of moves out. The shoulder guard kind of gets in the way. That's about it. Somewhat of a bicep rotation. Double bend at the elbow. Bullshit. Ball joint at the wrist. I'll ask for a 360 rotation. The watch can rotate. And I already showed you the sword. Ball joint at the chest. Can rotate somewhat, but those ribbons do limit it. Ball joint at the waist as well. And before we get into his hips, let's turn this figure around and take a look at the ball joint at this wing. Rotate a little. Hinge joint here. Hinge joint here. And a ball joint at this wing. Ball joint at this big ribbon. Hinge joint here. Ball joint at the hips. Allows for a kick. That knee bent inward too far. More for the transformation. Can move back fairly far until the wings get in the way. There's a hinge joint inside there that allows the leg to shift a little bit. And if we have both of the hips lowered, you get a really good spread. Thigh rotation. Double bend at the knee. Ball joint at the ankle. Allows for some rotation. Up and down. And an extra hinge joint allows it to move up even further. Hinge joint here. Shitty ball joint. And if you can see that, that's a pivot. Posability on this guy is pretty good, but the wings admittedly do get in the way. I think it would have been an improvement if this guy had removable wings like Andrew Amon. That would make the posability easier and give us a better look at his ass. Since the wings are a permanent fixture, this guy feels and looks a lot bigger than he is. Here's Digivolving Spirits War Greymon, Metal Guru. Mon, Diaboromon, Angelomon, Alphamon, Mega Kabuterimon, Madoka Godzilla Prime, and the original Digivolving Angemon. As expected from figures of the same line, these guys look complete together. But I'm too much of a lazy bitch to frame them all in one video. So, just like the original figure, this guy devolves into an orange flying moe blob. So, switch on that royalty free jazz, and I'ma walk you through the transformation. Audibly. First thing I like to do is fold up these arms. Elbow cap popped off again. Who gives a shit? I'm just gonna put it off to the side before I murder. This guy's actually got a pretty similar transformation to the original Angemon figure, just with a lot more shell. We'll get to that later. Retract the sword, fold up the wings, and by now he should look like he's about to punch you. <laughs> Moving to the legs, you want to make sure that both of his feet are pointing down. Flip out the knee pad, bend the leg all the way till the feet are reaching his face. We'll get these panels of kibble into position, and this is where we can fold out the front legs. We'll leave them there for now, but now let's get into the shit. <laughs> these two wings are actually connected, so you want to bend them and connect them. Same with the other side, and you could kind of see where this is going. I'll just take care of these eye panels right now. Might fuck me up later. Eh. Fold in these ribbons. Might have wanted to do that earlier. Oh boy. Flip that out. Twist that all the way around. And now we have half a butt. Extend this part. Bam. Now we can attach what was formerly the two ribbons. And look what we got. Cute little tail. <laughs> and now we are in position to close this up. Fold the wing in. Swing this big old thing all the way until... Snap. Uh, snap. And again for this panel. Snap. Uh, and now we can attach these two pieces together. It looks like he's screaming in agony. Uh, let's shut him up. Uh, oh no, that happens sometimes, but all you gotta do is push and... Ah! Well, that was kind of a mess, but unfortunately it was easier to film, and because I'm talking over transformations now, you're less likely to skip it, admit it, bitch. So here we have Patamon, and goddamn, what a glow up. The expressive face and the vibrant colors filled this figure with so much life and energy. He even manages to look more proportionate than the original figure, despite being fun with legs and these teeny tiny legs keep the figure standing even with all the die cast metal inside here these ball joints are no joke can't really say the same thing about the original this guy isn't bad by any means but this new one just murders this guy and his entire family they're buried in the backyard don't tell anyone <laughs>
<laughs> With all the praise on the table, I should say this guy isn't perfect, far from it. Definitely not as proportionate or well put together as the Digivolving Spirits Tentamon. This guy's the standard for Digivolving cute modes. Kibble here. Somehow the original belly looks better. But what the original can't even come close to is the ear poseability. Do you hear that? The ball joints are... Ooh, satisfyingly tight. Not so much here. <laughs> Unfortunately, even with the previously mentioned stand adapter, there's really no way to display this guy in the air. He doesn't have any kind of port here. As for the posability, I pretty much covered it all. What were you expecting from something as basic as this? So we can just pull out the trusty ruler and move on to the size comparisons. Here's Agumon, Gabumon, Karaman, Gatomon, Doruman, Tentamon, Monica Godzilla Prime, and the original Digivolving Patamon. As good as this guy looks, he is hilariously oversized. It's like if you selected Patamon and activated some spirits. Leave a like if you get that joke. Ooh. Overall, this figure is amazing. <laughs> Look, I know what you're thinking. How could I possibly give this guy a double kiss even with all of the flaws that I pointed out? Well, seeing as this is one of the few lines that I'm actually collecting all of them, I feel that the Digivolving Spirits line requires its own scale. All of these guys have similar flaws. Kibbletopia, lack of posability, and not always the best proportions. Looking at them by themselves compared to each other instead of comparing them to other figures that I might like even more, this guy is double kiss worthy. But on my normal scale, a single kiss of course, maybe even bordering on a hug, this guy just has a lot of problems. But is it really okay if I'm giving mediocrity some kind of pass? Who gives a shit? I'm Link Japan! If you're collecting these Digivolving Spirits along with me and you've gotten this far, why the hell not? Thank you so much for watching, leave a like, give me a comment, let me know what you think, and subscribe for maybe more Digivolving Spirits reviews? You know, the next figure in the line after this guy is a repaint. And because I don't really like talking about repaints on this channel, that would require creativity on my part. Black War Greymon might be the first one that I skip. I swear it's not because he's black. And so, after the inevitable closing of the fail box, the time has come for the fail box. Wait, what do you mean this isn't the finale?